any significance to the history of Decatur County or Greensburg. So, as a resident and anxious person that I am, I would like the chance to rebuild this for my family. Not, not for a resale, not for profit. I want this for my last home that I would own. So what was brought to attention when I got to visit the, the board for the first time last week is their concern with the youth practices at the Hampton Inn. Anybody that knows my family, I've helped in youth programs. I'm still active in high school programs. You know, from I've coached youth football, I've coached junior high sports, and I'm currently still with the high school with wrestling. So as far as youth practices being a bother next door to me, that is not an issue, nor is it for my wife or the rest of my family. Um, talk about how loud it's going to be, that, that's not an issue. What is an issue to us is being able to get a chance to redo this home and not make it an eyesore when you enter Greensburg. I mean, you look at it as progress, yes, I, I understand that. But don't forget your history too, and that home is part of it. It can be, again. I mean, this house is extremely solid. It's set with no water, no heat for almost 11 years. 11 years, and it still stands. Now, granted, it started to show its toll, but I assure you, this house is solid. The only part that's really nasty is the addition they put on it in 1994. Now, it has been vandalized. It has been broken into. Now, the new addition part has had all the wiring ripped out of it due to vandals and theft. But the original house with the plaster walls, the 12 foot ceilings, now granted it's not the best looking, but they never touched it. The original home, the, the French doors, the, the mantles, they're still, all still there. There's no glass broken in this whatsoever. The, the stairway is still solid, the banister is still solid. This home is worth saving. And I'd hate to see us tear it down for, as proposed before, 10 years ago, a strip mall. And I, I assure you that if you ever drove around what malls we have now, there's plenty of vacancies. So why would you add something else that won't have one store in? Not to mention the lot's less than five acres for both lots. So, I mean, I just if the board would just take that in consideration. And, and Mr. Robbins proposed a plan for that area. Well, they've had a lot of proposals for that area. Just they've never come through. Um, Another thing that was brought up was a city sewer hookup. Currently is on septic. All three through there is on septic. I found that out through Jeff Smith through the sewage. Just because if you look online, this home that I'm talking about, it shows it's hooked to city sewer, but it is not. So there's some discrepancies as far as what's what. But I had to go to talk to Jeff just to make sure. So with, with it acting like it's an issue to have a septic in the city limits now, you know, possibly ask for an exemption or maybe a variance. Say if you rezone it, I'll get it inspected. If it doesn't meet inspection, then I'll replace it. But Jeff Smith said it won't be too long that that, that sewer line that stops midway in front of the Hampton Inn will be run out past that home. So I don't see where a septic's going to be an issue. If I got to pay the hookup, then I'll pay the hookup. If I got to pay to have the inspection on the septic, then I'll pay it. If I got to have a new septic, then I'll get it. Because either way you look at it, regardless if we do this home or not, you put any building out there, what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to run the septic, and you're going to have to hook up to it somehow. So that shouldn't be a, a factor in this. Either way, if I get it or you guys vote anything in on it, you're going to have to pick it up anyway. Have you bought the home? No, there is, a ver there is an actual verbal signed agreement through the realtor who we're going through, and it's pending pending rezoning because being a commercial zoning I can't purchase it fix it and live in it so that that this still depends on rezoning and then I didn't quite understand the youth practice well what okay I understand with the new jail going in they used to be soccer fields so last year some of the soccer practices was held over to Hampton Inn. yeah <clears throat> so with the septic and the city sewer being an issue, I don't see where it's going to be an issue because regardless of what you put there, you're going to have to tap into it anyway. Um, the noise and the ambient light and the traffic on anything that's ever going to be there, that was brought up. First of all, I have four kids. 
Noise is not a problem. Okay, I promise you. Noise is not a problem. Uh, the ambient life, anybody that wants to live in the city limits is going to deal with ambient life. I grew up in the corner of Hillcrest, Moscow Road. You know, I lived in that Bedford Stone two-story. When you guys, when it was decided to put the movie theater in or the Holiday Inn, I was right there. That didn't pose a problem with our family. And I don't see it being a problem now to use against not deciding just to take this into consideration. So, I mean, with, with those points, you know, I, I don't know what else I can present to you. Being have such a short time means, you know, I work throughout the day. You know, I had some of the facts I wanted to get. I just, I didn't have access to that information. So, did the best I could with what I had, and I'd really like you to can consider this. Because I'd hate for this home to be dropped for a strip mall that's not even full. And even if it's a strip mall with apartments above it, wouldn't that be considered residential also? Just because you got a store that's vacant underneath that doesn't make it right. And the last thing I'll leave you with, you know, because I, I just don't want to bore you in. I can tell it's been a long day already. You guys had a chance to do something with it for almost 12 years. Nobody's done nothing with it. You give it to me, and I'll show you progress within a month and a half. Because half of that will be in paperwork just getting it done. The work ain't the problem. It's the rezoning that I'm running into issues. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions or? Regarding, I was at the you know, it came in front of the planning commission. Um, to answer your question about the rezoning, I believe it was when it was annexed. Kathy can better. It was 2007, is what we said. I think. Um, yeah, it was brought to you. Look at the comprehensive plan that's been done. Comprehensive plan shows that area out there being what it is now, the B2, B3s, and so forth. Um, we, just, we, we had a long conversation in regards to some of these same points that he brought up, and you know, and everybody appreciates the, the passion he shows for fixing the house up. Um, it was it was brought to a motion. It was uh, the motion was made to send it to council with an unfavorable recommendation with a six to one vote. this but what we have here is, a, is an example of spot it'd be spot zoning essentially um, it's exactly right that, that we haven't had the development we've been hoping for in that area but actually we do now um, we have a developer that has put, uh, purchased uh, the, the site right in front of the Hampton Inn adjacent to that uh, to the home site as well as options on the um, the adjoining site on the other side, ready to make it for development. Uh, which again, the development is specified in the uh, comprehensive plan as what the public wants for that particular area. Um, we hope that this will be uh, another catalyst uh, for, for growth in that area. Uh, growth, that, again, immediately we have not seen, but uh, uh, I think we will we will start to see uh, as, as seen by the. the Developments along the Veterans Way, and that will be an additional draw to this particular area and help it help it grow. Um, uh, the Hampton Inn also submitted a, a letter as well, uh, asking for it not to be resumed uh, because they also feel that that would uh, it be benefit them even more if it was for a commercial use and what the original uh, reason it was to be. Uh, again, it's very difficult. I, I, completely agree with, with uh, Mr. Hunter and the historical value. We have a number of, of historical homes in our city that, that need the love that he's able to give. And uh, we encourage him to, to, and I hope, to help in any way, shape, or form to get him working on one of those um, one of those houses because he is a talented individual and I can, can uh, 
tell you that he, he does wonderful work. So, uh, but from the EDC point of view, from the development side, uh, we do have a developer that wants to develop uh, those lots, those three lots in a row. And uh, as any community development planning practice, um, spot zoning is the best practice to do the course. I'll take any questions. <laughs> Which three crosses on the Stanford? Right in front of the Hampton Inn, is that the three you're talking about? Yeah, these three. And you've got this one, uh, and then the options on the other side. So which will be? So what are we, which side are we, which side are we designing? Just this one, the other one, this one? So right, that's right in front of the fuel of those two. <laughs> so, all right, so you, you want this one, correct? Which one, which one is the best one? Say if a developer is interested, what is what is that degree of interest? Uh, degree of interest is, I think, extremely high. We've had meetings with the owner of the Hampton Inn to coordinate some of the uh, facilities that will be coming in, as well as I mean, the purchase was made from First Financial Bank uh, a month ago, and he's been in conversation actually with the RH Investments from Oregon. They were actually bidding. Um, them against each other okay. uh, to raise the price, and then the options on the opposite uh, property, um, I believe, have been held for some time. So, has the developer purchased any property? Or signed an agreement to purchase any property? Yeah, the property, the three lots. Yes, he needs to purchase the one uh, directly uh, in front of the uh, on the Hampton. He has an option. Lost his Yes. And he lost his bidding. We see it as a, as a kind of a gateway into the Veterans Way area. Um, uh, hopefully, to draw even more traffic down this way towards the city uh, off that off that exit. Uh, right now, the has two driveways there, two pedestrian driveways. Maybe I'm not a traffic expert, but maybe not the safest of, of locations for those uh, for for heavier traffic. But uh, uh, we do see it as a as a Are you at liberty to say what they want to do? It's uh, I can say some of the discussions that we've had. A lot of it hinges on uh, if that property, obviously, um, and, I, and I hesitate to to, to say it. Uh, but everything from a, um, some sort of eating arrangement to gas or some sort of sea store kind of thing. Um, a, a, a lot of things have been talked about. I, I don't want I don't want to settle on one particular uh, facility. Just so you know, Kevin mentioned that the, the planning commission had a six to one vote. I was the one vote just and the reason I was the one vote, just to explain why, um, is this is I mean right here as we first come into the city off the interstate, it's 
you know, there's a couple other houses there, but they're actually behind trees pretty well. You don't see them. This is really the first property you see as you come in, and you see the big hole in the roof. You see the big plywood on the door. It's, that's a, and that's one of the first things you see as you come into our community. That's that's your your gateway into Greensburg if you're coming in off that exit. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I I guess I'd like to see something done to improve that lot and improve that that spot. And that's why I was the one vote, just because that's what you see right now, right? So. Well, I think more important we need to look at. I mean, I'm, I got a mobile house, I love it, but. We do have a comprehensive plan, and there was hours and years of work went into that comprehensive plan, and I think it's probably something we should kind of stick to. When, when, the, when, the, the, when the city annexed this, was it already a Somebody was living there at the time, but, but it's been empty. Yes. Almost all every year. Yeah. And that property, I guess, maybe to the north, to the northwest of that right there, this, the second property or the third property we're talking about, right? There's another house or a big garage with an apartment above it. Apartment above. Yeah. 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 Make a motion to go with uh, the zoning board's recommendation to uh, deny the zoning. Have a second. Second. Okay. So we'll the floor is that they would go with the motion of the Commission Planning Commission to not be zoned. Let's have a roll call vote, please. Ryan McKenzie. Uh, yeah. Kevin Fleetwood. Yes. Aaron Covington. No. Jamie Kane. No. Daryl Horn. Yes. Okay. So the motion passes. Second for the tenderloin throwdown that was approved. Uh, Jeff Smith uh, <coughs> quotes for a new truck for the uh, sewer department, uh, for the sewage plant. Uh, this is to replace a 1999 half ton pickup and it was awarded to Ford, uh, Don Meyer Ford, for $22,477.20. Ron May came to the board. Uh, uh, let's go back up to uh, Jeff Smith. Uh, talked about the uh, sanitary storm sewer on North Lincoln Street. Uh, that was awarded to uh, O'Mara for $134,905. Uh, Ron May brought a change order, change order number four. This was for Lincoln Street. This was for uh, tree removal, uh, some railing, and um, Sign rental, and uh, it's for $28,203.60. We are still, even with those change orders, we're still $100,000 under budget for that project. Um, Mark Klosterkemper brought the uh, bids for the uh, 
uh, property on the west edge of Honda that we talked about last month, and uh, that was to repave a road for a logistics company back there, and uh, that was awarded to O'Mara for $75,944.74. Uh, Brenton came and talked to us about the uh, the IT engineer, I will say that the board of folks, it sounds like, uh, are very favorable for that also. Uh, the mayor then told us that the uh, 911 uh, emergency dispatch uh, services, uh, we approved $98,894 as our share, and the county now is going 50 50 with us, where I believe it was, what, 60 40? before and we adjourned. because um, I was the contact for Father John Meyer um, initially, and he contacted us about the possibility of uh, St. Mary's. They're concerned about what's going to happen long-term with the property, and they want to be sure that it's well used and that it um, represents something that the city would like to see happen. So they have made an offer to turn that property over. And Brian's done some work on the development side and has some ideas relative to proposals and so forth. I think the main idea here is, is that the city would actually have control with what uh, that, that ground would be uh, uh, versus none. It is, it is a gateway into our downtown, so it would be very valuable in that sense as far as development. Uh, the city does not want to get into the, nor does the EDC or anybody else want to get into the business of development. We would most likely be able to uh, help incentivize that, that property and take out bids of, from uh, local developers and, and other developers to. to be able to select the best use for that property. Um, I think I've talked to some of you guys already in the previous, uh, and it is uh, the opportunity is there to move forward, and, and on behalf of the Stellar team, I think the EDC would like to uh, um, entertain that, that opportunity. 
Have we done any kind of cost analysis on what it would cost to keep it, sustain it for, you know, until something happens? Yes, the, the insurance for the, the property, was this Okay, uh, be 2000 and then the electric and gas would be uh, for the entire year, 2000 We would hope to not hold it longer than a year, though. That would be the, the, the uh, ideal. Is there any buzz? What's that? Is there any buzz at all? Any buzz? Yeah. Yes, we've had, I've had three different actually inquire about it. Um, and that's before it's actually on the market or anything like that. And we would, the process would be ideally be, uh, we would put a call out for bids, make it aware that it's available, and entertain those, and uh, of course the final decision would come before here as far as what it would be used. It's quite, it's, it's not often that you have that much property that close to your downtown. It's, uh, it can really be a, a catalyst for redevelopment of some of that section, and, and again, it's being a gateway to the downtown, it's kind of an important piece of property. Well, what would be the difference between just assisting them with taking bids and still allowing St. Mary's to own the property, and allowing the EDC maybe to get involved to help take bids and help coordinate that, and the city still doesn't have the liability of owning the property, but we're giving that investment to help with the development of the community without taking the liability? That would be a push. Yes, and I think it's a matter of controlling the price of that, where that ends up being as well. So basically, if the city be able to control that, where a certain developer may come in, it may inflate the price. Well, I'm just, I mean, look at the other property we were talking about tonight, where we zoned it for commercial and it sat there for 12 years, and we don't want to, we don't want to take on a burden and then own it for 12 years before we find somebody to come in and potentially develop it. There's no guarantee that we would find somebody right away. Right? Right. Just, so how do we how do we help with that situation without taking on that burden is what I would say. Yeah, I would think the difference is there weren't call for proposals issued for that piece of property that you're referencing, where there would be for this, and Brian would actively be involved with that. As far as the use of the property, how restricted are they being? Uh, I think the, the main restriction has to do with the church itself, um, and that is, uh, Term. No alcohol. Well, that's, <laughs> that's basically it. Uh, no prof I think no profane use um, within the church walls, and that uh, uh, includes no alcohol. Make a decision tonight. Um, if you can, yes or no. I, uh, it was on the agenda, but I got talked about it somehow. It wasn't on the agenda, so I don't think we should take a vote okay. on it. Yeah. We're just talking about our opinions without taking a vote on it, though. I think that's a huge liability that we be accepting. I think there's some uh, structural problems with the school as well, as my understanding, possibly with the foundation. I don't know that. That's what I've heard. And so, I think there's a huge liability we'd be taking on as a city to take that property for the small benefit of saying we have the control. I don't understand why we couldn't maybe help work with the church and take bids and help help facilitate that process for them, right, to help maybe to see if we can help that out. But I, my opinion is I don't think we want to take that burden on or that ownership on it. So that's my opinion. Yeah. Downfall of that is something in there that's you know, that it's already in an area that's kind of decrepit anyway so you have it a little bit more of an opportunity to clean that area up all how long has St. Mary's been trying to sell us it'll be three years in August that the church has been vacant the school moved in 2011. Has anybody offered the buyer? Yes. Um, not necessarily the, I think, the use that the church was looking for. Uh, or maybe with the city of Bedford. Okay, thanks. 
thinks. Thank you, Byron. Discuss this more. I'll, I'll move to adjourn again. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Got a second? Okay.